Hi, this is Nell, and I'm going to talk about the very beginnings of modern dance in America and the choreographer Louis Fuller. So one might ask, what is modern dance? Is it the opposite of ballet? Is it related to ballet? And it's come to mean different things over the course of the 20th century. And what's really interesting about modern dance is that it's not based on a sort of foundation of certain conventions and rules like ballet. Um, by contrast, modern dance has really been defined by the individual choreographers, the, the very individualistic artistic visions of a series of people over the course of the 20th century. And what modern dance means for Loie Fuller is something completely different than what it meant for Martha Graham or Alvin Ailey. And at the time that Loie Fuller was dancing, there wasn't such a thing as so-called modern dance. Uh, it was just dance. So in the late 19th century, uh, ballet was really kind of a dead art form in America. It was very vibrant in Russia and in other parts of Europe. Uh, a lot of Italian ballet dancers came to America to dance, but there wasn't a Native American ballet tradition. And there was very little European ballet that came to America. The Metropolitan Opera uh, produced some ballet performances in the 1880s and 90s, and that was kind of it. The dancing that was going on was generally in dance halls, music halls, vaudeville, variety shows, theater, all entertainment, and the dancers were always women. And dancers were sort of considered the equivalent to prostitutes almost. They were eye candy. They were not artists. So for people who are interested in dancing as a form of personal, artistic, or spiritual expression in America, uh, there really wasn't any opportunity. So Loie Fuller got her start in theater. She wasn't really a trained dancer, and she later emphasized quite strongly in her autobiographical writings that she really didn't believe in training, and she felt that it was it sort of hindered the expression of the dancer, the natural expression. But she was uh, on the stage from a very young age in theater, and through experimentation and sort of happenstance opportunities, she found a very distinctive style of movement that involved the use of uh, lots of billowing fabrics and moving fabrics with her arms and twirling and swirling. And it was very much this kind of fabric-based movement that really defined Loewe's style. The other major defining element of her dance was lighting. Uh, she was very interested in the most cutting-edge uh, lighting technologies, and she actually had a sort of chemistry lab later in her career where she did lots of experiments and accidentally blew off her hair. And she actually wrote um, the Curies when they discovered radium that she would like for them to build her uh, a radium fabric for her to dance in, which they declined, saying it was too expensive. So she was very interested in lighting technology and was a, an early uh, pioneer of some theatrical lighting techniques, which we think of as very familiar, but at the time were not. Loewe was also notable for her sort of synesthetic use of music in her dance, meaning that she took the music that she choreographed to, including great concert music like Wagner and Gluck and Mendelssohn, and music that was considered really highbrow art. She took that music and created uh, visuals that were in response to it, that were supposed to be the true expression of the music. She wasn't just making up a dance to go along with music, but the dance itself served as an expression of the music. And she had very particular ideas about color associations. This kind of music is red, this kind of music is blue, and she used that to create a kind of unified, uh, kind of multidisciplinary feeling performance. Louis' big first break was the serpentine dance, which she invented in 1889, and it's famously been uh, imitated by many other dancers at the time who all claimed to be Louis Fuller herself. Uh, she went on to invent other dances, such as the butterfly dance, where she used um, sticks inside the sleeves of her dress to create the appearance of wings. She moved to Paris soon after, and that's where she really became a huge hit and a huge celebrity. Paris really embraced her. And at the time, Art Nouveau was very much in vogue. Art Nouveau is a, a movement in design and visual art architecture uh, that emphasized the use of arabesque curving 
uh, undulating forms and naturalistic organic looking forms, the use of flowers, butterflies as motifs. And Art Nouveau was sort of a reaction against the industrialization of society and a kind of precursor to modernism. So Loie Fuller was embraced by Art Nouveau artists, and some of them created works inspired by her and her dance, and she made uh, somewhat of an impact in the movement. Louis is sometimes overlooked in dance history because her work was very much based on theatricality and her stage presence and her visual effects, but she herself wasn't that much of a dancer, and uh, contemporaries remarked that her physique was not very dancerly. She was somewhat round. She didn't have the kind of look and feel that you might associate with an athletic, uh, highly technical dancer. She was really um, a theatrical performer who used movement. Isadora Duncan was about 22 years old when she met her in Paris in around 1900. And uh, Fuller was interested in Duncan's dancing and believed in her ability and took her on tour and sponsored her uh, on her first tour of Europe. Duncan eventually came to outshine Fuller in terms of her influence. In my next video, I'm going to talk about Isadora Duncan.